Oh, you can buy one of those boxes? Yeah, 100%. I'm going to buy like 50 Pokemon boxes. <laughs> I can't. I can't resist. Bro, imagine like a Charizard comes in your thing or something. Did I buy like a Charizard? Box? Card? I don't remember. I'm like a Holly. Yeah, no, you're, you're being a box. Bitch. No, you did buy a box. You bought a Game of Thrones box. What did it come with? No, no, you bought a Marvel box. Remember, you got that Groot mug. Is that? No, you got the Groot mug. Yeah, he I got the Groot mug. I don't have any like cool memorabilia. Yeah, slurping on Groot. You want to join the cold opening here? Oh fuck! I didn't even know you started. Yeah, I think you bought a Game of Thrones box. I don't think so. I don't have any cool like trinkets. I, I have all mine. Hand of the King. Pin up there. Yeah, you bought the game. Though. I bought yeah. the. Uh, I bought the cowboy beat box. I bought the Terrible. Lannister banner. <laughs> that was a bad one, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah. It was so, but I I did get a cowboy beat wallet. wallet. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and I still use it. Hmm. It's holding my cash. <laughs> 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 Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Nerd Suit Podcast. We are gearing up for New York Comic Con, and today I am joined by Aaron, the Nerd Suit Monkey, and Teddy. How you guys doing? Good. Doing, doing well? Cold. Yeah. Cool. yeah. Weird New York weather. Yesterday it was literally 88 degrees. Today it's like 56. Can we get a transition ever? That that little girl, uh, Liana Mormont, I mean Greta Thunberg, Thern, Thornburg, yeah. she might be onto something here. <laughs> Stole my fucking joke. <laughs> <laughs> Stole it right from under it. Yeah, I'll be quick, man. The other day, I'm like, oh, the net. I'm like, oh, it's supposed to be 88 tomorrow. I'm like, maybe this, uh, <laughs> I don't know the last name. Are you editing this podcast or I am? I don't know. Okay, well, we'll see who keeps the joke. Then. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, we're here to talk about a bunch of stories in the world of movies, mostly movies. We've got reactions to movies and movies that are being made, studios agreeing, coming together so that one character can come back to the franchise that he's supposed to be in. Thank God. What the hell is that? Um, I think uh, Ghost Rider. Mm, cool. Yeah, Ghost Rider is being greenlit at the mcu compound uh and also we have fan questions to answer of course every week we do and you can send us your fan questions at nerdsoup for you at gmail.com nerdsoup for you on twitter nerdsoup monkey on te- twitter teddy nerdsoup on twitter and listen to this podcast on itunes at the nerdsoup podcast I spotify tell them, soundcloud tell them to stop moving because every time i'm editing all i hear is you don't yo <laughs> i'm fucking getting real sick of you man i really am <laughs> <laughs> You're not the one editing. All I hear is your sniffles, your <clears throat> your your chair moving. It's you do like, <clears throat> a lot. Yeah. Oh, so leave it in. Yeah. I don't know. You like that. those giant cinder blocks from Mario? Remember when they would stop? <laughs> 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 I always trying to stop that little Italian plumber. I'm not gonna leave it in. Mario is like you know I, I saw a uh, report that the makers of Mario and Luigi is uh he's fi- filing for bankruptcy. No. Yeah. Who is that guy? I forget his name. He's like a legend. I think it's, it's the guy who created it. Yeah, it's the guy who, cre- like Super Mario, the original one. Yeah. Where he was like, we're just going to run across the screen and that's it. <laughs> and we're occasionally going to jump, hit some blocks. Perfect. I love the simplicity. That's a shame. What are you going to do? <laughs> <laughs> guess, yeah. Take care of your money, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Why don't you be smarter next time? No, but we, we, do, we do hope he gets back on his feet. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> we, need another, we need another banger like Super Mario. Oh, yeah. Let's get right into it. The first topic of today would be Spider-Man coming back to the MCU. Sony and Disney have agreed upon a deal to bring Spider-Man back into the MCU. Happened uh, a lot sooner than later, than later than we expected. I mean, we all knew it was going to happen, right? I think so. It had to happen. There's too many pu- like pieces of the puzzle that have to, like, they, they can't just stop doing it because then... It would fuck too much shit up. Yeah, it really would. And you don't need any more additional continuity problems with a franchise like this, where they're already starting to retcon things that they've said in other movies that kind of mess up the timeline. Specifically, Spider-Man was a character who was like 20 years later after uh, the Avengers attack. Remember that? Yeah, yeah. The time It was so ridiculous. But I'm happy he's back. Especially when they, like, geared up him to be taking Iron Man's mantle in Far From Home. (laughs) So... If he just was ripped out. <laughs> they set him up as a main character, then they're like, he's gone. Yeah, so... No appar- explanation. Well, apparently he's going to be going like... I don't know. They're gonna, he's going to share cinematic universes, kind of. It's weird. Apparently, he's the only superhero that can that can alternate universes. Like, yeah, he can swing across the different universes. <laughs> the studio. Uh, from Sony Studio to Disney. Yeah. Well, I feel like they're going to focus his solo movies more separated from the Avengers and the MCU timeline so just in case something like this happens again after these two film two films are up that they can easily just be like all right Spider-Man's gone now so he's gonna have like his own little Sony interact with those characters and I'm sure they'll reference the MCU very vaguely but it won't be super attached only when he crosses over to let's say the next Avengers movie or wherever they decide to stick him in that second movie that then we'll actually get the interactions and I guess tighter continuity between the two if if I'm Feige, I'm putting an Avengers movie in the next like year. 
<laughs> I'm just gonna make an Avengers movie. Yeah, you would think now so. we need them. Yeah, we can't take them. Right, they, their whole plans were to you know lay off the Avengers movies yeah. for a couple of years, let these other characters come in, but now you have Spider Man. It's like we got to fast track that. Yeah, we got to get him front and center because even though he was in Infinity War and Endgame, you would like to see him more as a part of the team, as a member. Yeah, but I- I'm excited to see how they do this if the MCU decides to bring in some of these Sony characters, if they negotiate further, say, hey, we want Venom to pop up in our X-Force movie, you know? Venom, part of the X-Force with Deadpool. That would be interesting. Tom Hardy, Ryan Reynolds. But e- even the uh, the other movies that Sony has planned, it's going to be interesting to see how Spider-Man interacts with those characters and if Disney can ever bring those characters in. Superheroes are going to start pulling like the NBA and NFLs. <laughs> yeah, they're gonna nah, be I'm not out. playing, man. Yeah, for trades, yeah. And, like Jalen Ramsey. It's like I'm not showing up in Avengers. Yeah, you know, I'm just not doing it. You well, pay appa- me. Well, apparently <laughs> Tom Holland was a big part of them getting it together. He, I think, he called Sony executives, Disney executives, because he wanted to be still in the MCU. So it's a smart move. <laughs> he did the classic, like Mom said that if uh, <laughs> you said if it's okay. <laughs> hey, you want to go to dinner? And then he calls up to Disney. Yeah, yeah. All right, so we're going to dinner here. Yeah, he parent trap them yeah. both. It's Bob Iger and the Sony CEO. Oh, what are you doing here? I don't know why they're Italian. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we got to make a deal for this kid. That's our boy. Was the, was the deal... You it, taught us how to love again, Tom. You taught us. <laughs> for that, we'll be forever grateful. Shoulders. Yeah. Is there a number on the deal? Or has it not been said yet? Yeah, I think it's Disney is now getting 25% of the box office, whereas they were getting 5%. Are, so, they, still, are they still getting... Uh, uh, and they sell merchandise. merchandise. Yeah, Disney still owns merchandising, a hundred percent, which is so funny because that's where the real money is. I know there was a. I saw one. <clears throat> I think with the last deal, they had like thirty percent of the day one box office. Disney. Yeah. I wonder if they did. Yeah, that's interesting. That's a little interesting. I thought Michael. I heard that. Day one box office. You know, these movies sometimes pull in like fifty, sixty million dollars the opening night. I'm gonna start doing that. Like I think I heard and just say a ridiculous thing. Not yeah. saying Teddy's is, but that just gave me an idea. Yeah, yeah it sounded actually. like you did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it sounds like you were in- directly inspired by his ridiculous statement that I've never seen before. No, th- maybe you just did more reading than me. Yeah. You read that, right? So well I actually yeah. heard somewhere that Chris Evans and uh Robert Downey Jr. <laughs> actually <laughs> held uh Bob Iger at gunpoint until they made a deal happen. Okay, they were just beating him senseless yeah. like I don't know why they're beating up the Disney guy because <laughs> Sony was the one pulling like, hey, up. But you're going to give us our boy back. Hollywood, right? He's not my boy. There's no name for it either, right? They were boys. <laughs> you just threw that in because yeah, of boy. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Oh, I started watching Bodyguard. Mm-hmm. Man, Good, there's, right? there's a scene in that first episode where it's like Richard Madden is James Bond. When he's, he's nice, su- right? When he, yeah, when he's suiting up and he's like, I need my two Glocks yeah. in his Scottish accent. It's like, <laughs> Sean Connery? But yeah, no, uh, Sony, Disney... There's no name for it yet, right? Because I have a good name for it. What do you mean? The deal? No, no, for the new movie. Oh, no, there is no name. I saw the date. It was July 16, 2021. Let's hear it. I'm coming home. That is the worst. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> We're just going to keep going with home. Yeah. <laughs> Spider-Man, home, home on the range. I'm coming home. We guys got to go to California to fight Venom, right? He's in San Francisco, so it's Spider-Man... Far from home, but not that far. Still in the continental <laughs> United States. Right. But it's like a long plane ride. It's like the Birdman title. Or Spider-Man, the California Dream of Ignorance. Yeah, Calif- yeah, that's what I was going to say. California loves Spider-Man. But I mind. I, I'd rather Tom Hardy. Dr. Strange love and the emancipation of one Harley Quinn. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Now that this is a lot of deals we're making here. <laughs> yeah. I, I still want to see Craven, so I want him to be in New York City. I want it to be the big New York City epic. That's the way you keep it away from these other... Avengers and other Marvel stories is that you keep it in New York City and everybody else is out to dinner. You know, Doctor Strange is Multiverse of Madness with Scarlet Witch and Fantastic Four. They're still not Fantastic Four yet, you know? I love the whole Spider-Verse that they're, that they're working on. They're trying to keep, like you just said, it's going to be Kraven, you have Venom, well, there's he, Spider-Mans. He's a character like Batman where he has a, a stacked rogues gallery, so you can very much keep him isolated yeah. and it will still work. I feel like with other characters... Like Captain America, after he fights Red Skull, like what? What are you doing? Who are you fighting? You right. gotta kind of have the. He's wheeling and dealing. Yeah, he's... he'd probably run for office. <laughs> after that, come back as a World War II hero. We never get the Eisenhower administration. And then you have the Winter Soldier. Then it kind of builds and builds, and then you finally gets with the Avengers, Iron Man, and Civil War. That whole everyone's there. It's that's a natural progression for that character. Where Spider Man, you really can have him. Th- like we don't we don't have Venom, Carnage, Doc Ock. Craven. There's so many villains that he can go up against. Yeah. Is, it, is there a Carnage movie coming out? 
Carnage is going to be in Venom too, and he's being played by Woody okay. Harrelson. Yeah, he was at that very end credit scene. Yeah, no, I, I didn't know if they were going to give him his own movie. Yeah, I think that works well. Carnage is a because Carnage is somebody who gained the symbiote power, but he was just a straight up madman. Eddie Brock was kind of resisting it, and then they find that balance at the end of the movie. But right. yeah, that's going to be. I mean, Woody Harrelson to me, he's a powerhouse of an actor. I so think, underrated. As I think all time great. He's one of my favorite actors. Yeah, he, he can play comedy. He can play serious. He can play. He can play a villain. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's great. got great range, man. I mean, the two movies that stick out, not movies, but his season one performance in True Detective, I think has yep. gone very underrated. Everybody always thinks of McConaughey and his performance was great, but also his performance in the last Planet of the Apes movie. He was such a good villain. So he he's just got that look, you know, when he gets crazy. Highwayman, he was great in too. I've never seen that. It's with, uh, I forget who, was, who was, uh, the co-actor was, but they play like the Texas Rangers. Okay. And like they go into retirement because they were so badass, and like they broke the rules of like what the government wanted. They didn't play by the rules. Yeah, Woody Harrelson and his partner. And then they couldn't catch. Did he play? Oh no, it was about Bonnie and Clyde. I'm an idiot. <laughs> it was a Bonnie and Clyde movie. What position did he play? Fullback. I don't know. But play fullback for the <laughs> Texas Rangers. For the Texas Rangers. <laughs> no, All right, he didn't let's... retire. He got forced out. Oh, uh, old it was, age. It was or him. Injury. It was they were uh, hunting Bonnie and Clyde, and they, they couldn't get him, so they hired him back. Oh, so they actually sucked. At first, he said they retired because they were so. No, 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 no. Well, Did you not get? I was talking about the baseball. Team they couldn't or? capture Bonnie and Clyde, <laughs> so they went and got Woody Harrelson out of retirement. You know, I'd like to see a modern day Bonnie and Clyde. That's there are certain movies that I feel could be remade every like fifty years. Well, was it Queen and Slim? That's yeah, kind of that like looks the yeah. same Bonnie and Clyde vibe ish. Yeah, it does. That looks good. Yeah, it does. When does that come out? Soon, I think. I hope so. All right, let's move on to the next story here. We <laughs> <Yeah>. have um, <laughs> the Birds of Prey trailer. The first Birds of Prey trailer or the Fantabulous Emancipation of One Harley Quinn. Yeah. I think that's actually the title, right? I, I think, think that's the it, first yeah. time anyone has ever nailed it. Yeah. Well, I guess. Besides Margot Robbie. Um, yeah, this trailer came out, and I'll tell you what. Bad trailer. Looks terrible. The actors look bad. Characters, not so swell. But if we're going to judge it based on the way Suicide Squad went, because Suicide Squad, that first trailer was incredible. I was like, this is movie of the year. This is going to be one of the greatest superhero movies of all time. And then it sucked. So, I don't know. Maybe they're it's, reverse psychology here. I don't think they're that smart. The tone of the movie, I guess, like, it's, it feels very much suicide. The second trailer, at least, with the whole, um, what, what song did they use? Bohemian Rhapsody? Yes. It felt very much like that. Another were, great trailer. The quick zooms in, in the trailer were very cartoony, which, if they're going for that vibe, it could, it could work. I just, I think everyone sells a bad taste from Suicide Squad, so... I, uh, yeah, I didn't really like this trailer at all. Too is her accent more pronounced? I hate her than voice. In Suicide Squad. I think so. Yeah, it looks like she's overacting a bit here. Yeah, it, 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 Me it and was Mr. better. Jay Su- broke up. Yeah. It was better in Suicide Squad. Yeah, it was less yeah. pronounced. It was more natural. This one's a little bit more of an exaggeration. It looks which like the cartoon mo- character does right. have that they're going more for the cartoon character in yeah. an R-rated movie. It's supposed to step up. It's supposed to be a step further into the darkness in Suicide Squad. And that could work. I mean, maybe so. So many times we've seen DC try to be dark gritty realistic and obviously they hit it out of the park with the dark knight trilogy and sometimes that didn't work so if they're going more comic booky cartoony then i think maybe it does have a chance to working because well are they going for r-rated deadpool here or is it an r-rated joker vibe or is it just a mix of the two r-rated guardians slash so it's kind of like deadpool yeah, I don't know. Not as ridiculous. There's not going to be people breaking the fourth wall, but... Yeah, everyone's talking about Ewan McGregor in this trailer, too. I thought he was... I thought he looked bad. Yeah. I, I thought looked really... It, it, it looks all goofy. I wanted oh, to be That was Ewan McGregor. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I wanted to be good. I'm dying for DC to take off and have the same success as Marvel because I do love their characters more than Marvel, but... I don't know. Just And it's just totally different from everything else that they have done besides Suicide Squad that... There really is no connection to the other movies. What I guess they're trying to do, they're trying to separate and move apart from the uh, DCEU or cinematic universe, but I don't know. We'll see how it goes. But Yeah, Rosie Perez playing uh, Renee Montoya. That, that casting to me, Rosie Perez, looks so out of place in this movie. She's so little and just what? not a, a – <laughs> she's not an imposing threat. Is she the one that throws a dynamite at the end? Maybe, yeah. She's she's actually a character that was created for the animated series. She's like a Gotham City cop. Um, you know, kind of a badass, but to me that was a that was a miscast. Also, Chris Messina, did we see him in this trailer? I don't as think Victor's so. ass? No. Well, uh, Mary Elizabeth Winstead, I like Huntress. That's one of my favorite characters. So she looked I think that was a good casting, but yeah, I mean Ewan. Yeah. I don't know. This trailer I mean, this movie I think kind of lives and dies with Margot Robbie's performance, I guess. And from what we saw it was, 
I don't know. I just I didn't like. I, I feel like the Suicide Squad one, the just the accent and the way she went about it was a little bit better than from what we saw here. But yeah, it's just a trailer. Her so. performance was praised the most. Her and yeah. uh, Will Smith. She talked about the Joker the entire trailer too. I wonder if he'll be in it, or like a a symbolism of the Joker. Well, I guess he kind of has to be in it because no, he doesn't have to be in it, but he has to be discussed and mentioned because they are so closely related. Those two characters. I don't think he'll be in it. Jared Leto. No way. That would be a big surprise. I think he's done. I think they're done with him. That's a shame. But the plot of this movie, apparently they're trying to save Cassandra Kane, who becomes one of Batman's Batgirls from Black Mask. That's interesting. I didn't know Cassandra Kane was in it. She's she's actually a pretty awesome character. She's a mute. She doesn't speak. She only communicates through fighting, apparently. She knows how to communicate with people based on their fighting techniques. It's weird. She's an what? interesting character, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but the trailer, you know. I guess this is what it is. You see, we'll yeah. see how it is in the movie. This comes out 2020, right? I think so. Yeah, and who's directing it is Kathy Yan, who hasn't really directed much. She did a comedy, Dead Pigs, in 2018. She she went to NYU, though. Good school. What city's worse, New York City or Gotham? I'd say Gotham now is probably worse. New York in the 80s, though? <laughs> or the 70s? Yeah. New York now is like a, like a giant mall. Even Brooklyn. When we were walking around Brooklyn, Aaron was like, yo, I feel like these rappers weren't telling the whole truth about this place. <laughs> it's nice, right? <laughs> the Apple Store, Ralph Lauren. Yeah. This, the spot where my grandma lives, it's like really nice. Yeah. It's so funny walking around. So my what parents. part of Brooklyn's bad? Um, right now. Nah, uh, bad parts. Yeah, there's a couple. There are parts that aren't great. Where Jay-Z grew up, I mean, that, that's, is that still bad? Marcy Projects? Marcy Projects? I'm not really sure. I think it's, I know Bedford Stuyvesant. That's where my mom grew up. She'd be like, oh, you need Best a. Eye? Yeah, Bedford. You know Biggie uh, grew up? Yeah, yeah. Same projects. It's like, oh, this area is. You used to need to wear. You, you used to need to. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, that was bad. Yeah. I wanted to go with where or yeah. used to need. You used to need a gun to walk around these parts. <laughs> really? Yeah, but times have changed. Yeah, I guess so. Strict the gun laws? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it. All right, let's move on to the next story here. We have Travis Knight directing uh, Uncharted. That's uh, interesting because Uncharted looked like it was shelved. Like, it was going to be shelved for, for years. It's kind of been in development hell with Tom Holland, but Travis Knight just did recently Bumblebee and Kubo and the Two Strings, which to me is one of my favorites. But this is good news. Yeah, he was also slated to do Guardians 3 if James Gunn didn't return. Or he was one of the names that was brought up. So I think it could be... I mean, I'm not familiar with the game, but Travis Knight, I, I really liked Bumblebee. I think Kubo is an animation masterpiece. Yes. I think. Um, so, and to be uh, considered to take over for Gar- uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, then he does have high esteem within the Hollywood industry. So I think it's a good good choice. I'm not, I don't know, Uncharted. I always get that and The Last of Us confused. So. <laughs> I Same feel like, studio. I feel like um, uh, it's, it's pretty tough to like take a video game story and turn it into a movie because you're going to get both sides of the spectrum. You're going to get the, the gamers and you know the critics from the movies. You got, what are you, you basing that on, though? That it's tough to make a video game movie. I'm saying it's got to be tough to make a video game movie. Yeah, but what evidence do you have? I don't have any. <laughs> I'm saying it's got to be tough. Not the prefla of uh, movies, video game yeah. movies that have failed miserably. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just like messing with you. Like, so you don't no. think it is? No, I, th- I do. I agree with you. Oh, but it's such. A... I'm just saying it's like. No, go ahead. Continue. <laughs> no, I'm good. <laughs> I'm alright. Why are you screaming at me? I'm not. <laughs> It's because there's so many bad video game movies, and you were like, it, it must be hard to make uh, video game movies. Yeah, well, I was going to say, like, I commend him for wanting to do it. So, yeah, it's like almost taking on Star Wars. Yeah. Because at this point, everything you do, anything you do, people are just going to bitch and complain and moan. Uh, have you played Uncharted? No. Have you? You haven't played it, right? You yeah. said you confuse it with The Last of Us. Let me borrow it. Uh, it's digital. I own it digital. Let me sign in your username so I get all your games. <laughs> Why? So you can order things and then I have to pay for them and be like, did you order this? You'd be like, no, I didn't. I got to do that for NBA. Yeah, you do. You need to take my NBA. That's why you can't give out Amazon Prime when people are like, oh, can I borrow your Netflix? It's like, sure. But Amazon Prime, you know, start buying Powerade, <laughs> buying people gift cards. I would. Yeah, that's what you do. Yeah, <laughs> get all these purchases. Uh, it wasn't me. I don't know. I think someone stole your card, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Uncharted is like, um, it could be like a modern Indiana Jones and I, I think I prefer that franchise when you compare those four games to those four movies. I think Uncharted, to me, is a little better. You look like you're about to press me. Oh, I'm listening. Oh, okay. I was watching the South Park the other day. It was on TV where they um they go see the Crystal Skull. You ever see that one? Oh, yeah. The, that's the fourth up. one, right? Which one? The Crystal Skull. Oh, the no. Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. You ever Skull. seen the South Park? 
No, no, I haven't seen this. Pretty Park. messed up, but they show pretty much George Lucas and Steven Spielberg butchering the movie, and they take it to court. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. They have like evidence of them doing it. Well, well it's I like mean, no one could admit it to themselves, and they're like, it's "Like we were in that theater. You witnessed what happened." It's like I've tried to forget. <laughs> I've tried to forget. <laughs> they go to the lawyer. He won't even take their case, but then he remembers. He's like, "I'll do it." You know what's funny is that that movie is not terrible, but the first three movies are considered perfect. Mm-hmm. And it came along, and it was there were so many goofy things about that movie, like the monkeys, the CGI monkeys look terrible. They don't even look like monkeys, and you know him hiding in from a nuclear explosion in a refrigerator, mm-hmm. which to me I don't know why that's criticized. I think that's hilarious. <laughs> Doesn't make sense though. Well, maybe the fridge was lined with some sort <laughs> <Yeah>. of anti-resistant <laughs> nuclear radiation. I don't know. Neil deGrasse Tyson probably tweeted about it. <laughs> Just cut through his drafts. Samsung stepping up their fridge game, huh? <laughs> those smart fridges, man. I see those smart fridges, and I'm like, what would ever possess me? Like, this is something. I don't get for, them. Yeah, this is for rich people. It's not even for rich people. It's like, why do you even need it? What is it? It's a touch screen. It could play music. Yeah, just music. use your phone. It was kind of handy. I'm not gonna tweet off my fridge. You yeah. could though. <laughs> you could. <laughs> yeah. if I ever needed to. I love that when uh, all those memes kept popping up. Oh, y'all still tweeting from your phone? <laughs> it's like tweeted from the Samsung fridge. <laughs> it's like tweeted from a Tesla. <laughs> those were all funny. Yeah, but Travis Knight directing uh, Uncharted. You guys should play it. Give it to me. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Sheesh. That was aggressive. I don't like your tone. You guys see the uh, the Ballad of Richard Jewell trailer? No. It's pretty good. That was the one when Leo and Jonah Hill were attached. Yeah, you're big on this movie. You're big on Leo and Jonah Hill being attached to it. Well, it was just you always bring it up. Thing that happened and it never happened. Who's now, in it now? It's Sam Rockwell and the guy who played uh, I Tanya, the bodyguard. Margot Robbie. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and the guy who was in—I always forget his name—but uh, he was also in Black Klansman. Looks really good. It actually, oh, Adam really, Driver. <laughs> yeah. I want to say it. <laughs> <laughs> looks like a good movie. Clint Eastwood's hit or miss, mostly miss, but. Oh, it's Clint Eastwood. Yeah. That's interesting. Leo and Jonah Hill probably like, eh, he don't he don't got it anymore. I think Leo did a J. Edgar with him, and that movie sucked. Yeah, it wasn't great. Clint Eastwood is, um, it's cool to see that he's so old still making movies. It's kind of an inspiration, you know? It's kind of like, you know, my grandparents are slacking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. When I look at my grandparents sometimes, I'm like, you guys are just so weak. <laughs> what Clint? don't even move. What Clint Eastwood, well, I can't say it. What Clint Eastwood movie? I can't say that. You're dead. <laughs> 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 uh, we're dead. You're talking to a tombstone. <laughs> what, movie would I, what movie would I know from him? My parents are like the Willy Wonka parents. What's, uh, like, what's like his most known movie? Clint Eastwood? Yeah. Gran Torino. Oh, him starring in it? Directing, or directing, or? directing it. Gran Torino. American Sniper. American Sniper. Mystic River. Unforgiven. He's got hits. What are you saying? He mostly miss. Oh, no. Earlier in his career yeah. as a director, he's one of the best of all time. He's oh. one of my favorites. I mean, just right there. Torino, Mule, Mystic River. 19... 19- 20 the, whatever to Paris last couple of years he's done like Sully J. Edgar I like Sully I like Sully too <laughs> The Mule was okay but that movie with the, the Mule was okay you didn't see The Mule did you I see I was it? having threesomes at fucking 80 years old <laughs> so you don't want to do that he's kind of like let me well I'm the director let me you know hell yeah <laughs> he's just gonna do whatever he wants yeah, what, yeah, what he really wanted to do All right, point. so I have a 12 inch penis and <laughs> it's a fucking wrench he's <laughs> just throwing a wrench in everybody yeah, I mean his earlier, his early two thousands, his nineties movies. I feel like there's others that we're forgetting, but American Sniper, that's a good one too. I love that. That movie. was nominated for Best Picture, Best Actor. But yeah, uh, the Ballad of Richard Jewell. I I didn't even see the trailer. Really, it's a good trailer. I think it could be good. Sam Rockwell. Is he playing like a semi racist Southerner? No, he's not. No, he's been. That's been his like his shtick lately. Yeah, uh, what was it? Through th- uh, three billboards. George um, Bush. Yeah. Just kidding. <laughs> that, was, that was my joke. <laughs> I think I got three billboards. What was the movie with uh Taraji P. Henson? It. Yeah, it was um Best of Enemies. Yeah, Best of Enemies. I was gonna do uh Vice, but kinda stole my thunder there. <laughs> Why don't you just live with it? Oh, what? million dollar baby. Yeah. Live with yeah, you gotta jokes are it's, it's yeah. we're communists here. The I made mean, that joke like a the, year ago. I'm right. flattered that you still remembered, but yeah, they came the out. George Bush joke? Yeah. I don't that you can't say that I stole that. I say like a week a week is like the time we're, when you can't say See, in my head, I... John Hamm's in it, Olivia Wilde. Ooh, I like John Hamm. Million Dollar Baby, he directed. Best picture. It's about a baby that costs a million dollars. (laughs) Really? No. It's real controversial. (laughs) 
I just had this baby, <laughs> and they're trying to sell it. Everybody's trying to sell this fucking baby. Would they you buy a baby a million for a million dollars if it was like LeBron? Yeah, like I'm trying to think like LeBron and like I had the money, and yeah, Nunez. like Justin Timberlake, <laughs> like with like, two like the best athletes in the world. If I had the money, I would. It's a good investment because then one day I could be like the best athlete ever. I'm gonna take loans. I'm gonna take out a loan. Wait, you're gonna give them a loan? <laughs> oh, no, I don't take out a loan. You get to take out. You could get involved with a loan shark. Yeah. Having to pay back this for a fucking baby. <laughs> the baby's gonna turn out to be like um like some kid we went to high school with. <laughs> it's a bum, a dropout. Yo, it's kinda like breeding horses, you know? That was me fifty bucks. Yeah, we're gonna we're, we're gonna get a tab going. <laughs> <laughs> you mix that with the loan for your million dollar baby. <laughs> um all right, let's move on here to uh, The Irishman. The Irishman is getting early reactions. People are saying it's a masterpiece. I think it's had like 50 reviews on Rotten Tomatoes, 100%. Wow. Talk about a director in his old age who's still still going strong, Martin Scorsese. Yeah, I was just watching Good- Goodfellas, and that movie is so fucking good. Yeah, and never seen it. Really? Just kidding. It's about it's a couple of fellas. <laughs> it's on TNT like every night. Or AMC. Yeah. But it's about a couple of fellas. Are they good? Let's see how to watch to you find watch out. It, yeah, yeah, I'm definitely. I mean, I've always the only reason why I was down on this movie because the three and a half hour runtime. <laughs> I just felt like uh, I don't want to sit through that. But Scorsese is one of my favorite directors, and and this having a hundred percent it has me fucking through the roof waiting for this. It sounds like you wait. doubted him, like he wasn't going to be able to nail this runtime. Like, I agree with that. The, there was some like a little bit of doubt. Like I don't know what's, what he's trying to do something with the de aging three and a half hours. Like you know. Does he still have anything left? And Ray sh- Romano should be you? wrong to doubt him, but what is Ray Romano doing in there? He still it. got it. Hey Irishman, nah, can't do a good Ray. <laughs> he, he, you know what? He fit Irishman. I how do you, how do you do a Ray? I feel <laughs> like you can. There, you do a Ray Romano. You could do his brother. His brother is the one that's easier to imitate. Was Ray Romano in the <laughs> movie about running for president lo- 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 or mayor? Was Ray Romano in the movie about running for mayor? Yeah, um, he was right. The big sick. Is yes. <laughs> no, no, funny people. <laughs> okay. No, I think that it wasn't it like some Moose Town or something yeah. like that. Yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. I remember that movie. I never saw it, but I remember the trailer. I saw it in theaters. You know what? He is like he's one of my idols. Him, Adam Sandler, for the way that they've conducted their careers, where he just gets that everybody loves Raymond Check and doesn't do anything. You know, <laughs> so I might you know appear in this Moose Mayor movie or might do a cameo in a new Marty Scorsese flick. <laughs> just living life, man. He and was playing golf at Bethpage, like they playing golf at four Beth months Page. ago. He's fucking Ray Romano. He has, you know? oh, yo, he's, his beard is fucking thick, dude. Yeah, he's got a thick beard. I wasn't recognize him. Who's got a better beard, him or Letterman? Ray. Ooh. Ooh. You know Letterman produced everybody loves. Okay, let's move on here. The Irishman. First reactions. I'm so excited, man. Me too. Yeah. Um, Imagine this is his best film. I mean, this guy's got some heat. You know what's so funny? When I was watching Goodfellas, I was I noticed how they casted younger actors for Henry and um, and Tommy when they were eighteen. Yes, and but Robert De Niro was he's the same age throughout. So when they go forward and they cast the adult actors for like twenty one, it's like it's like well now you can just digitally de age him. Well, even the jump from Henry Hill's young actor to Ray Liotta, it's like whoa. When Karen's like, I never knew a guy had such connections at twenty one. I didn't think it was that big of a deal. I'm like he's twenty one. He's forty three. And <laughs> Joe Pesci is supposed to be the same age. <laughs> Joe Pesci has an age of fucking bit, dude. From those movies? Yeah, because he's always, like, looked old. You know, he's one of those guys. Like, yeah. Larry David. You watch the first yeah. season of Curb Your Enthusiasm, he looks identical. <laughs> he's been 80 for the past yeah, 20 years. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's always been, like, 80. They were just doing uh, they were just doing that, like, side-by-sides, and then they had one with Chris Paul. And oh, yeah, he when his rookie age, year. He yeah, literally yeah. looks the same. Like, like he just came into the league. Yeah, Kobe was like that. There's, um, I'm watching Sopranos, and Paulie sees uh, a couple of his mom's friends. He's like, you know, when I was younger, you guys were always old. Now that I'm old, you're still fucking old. <laughs> <laughs> so oh, that Polly, always breaking balls. You do a good Italian. What? You do a good Italian. All right, we have any more stories here? Or are we gonna move on to fan questions? Well, I was gonna say, I heard Pesci is really good in this too, and Al Pacino yes, is performances. Very, all three of them are supposedly. I'm so pumped for a movie like this again. Gangster movies have not been good at all lately. When's the last good <laughs> one? The Departed. You know what looked maybe, like it was gonna maybe, be the yeah. next uh, Gangster great Squad? Gangster Squad. Yeah, that trailer for Gangster Squad with the Jay Z. The come on. They were all cocking their guns and looking like badasses. The old 1950s suits. Sean Penn. Was Four Brothers a gangster movie? More of a family it's tale. Kinda, yeah, yeah, it's kind of. Friendly. Um, you see Vin Diesel and The Rock squash their beef? Yeah. Yeah. The Rock hinted that he might be in uh, Fast 10. Oh, wow. That's franchise. <laughs> I remember I, I asked you last podcast, who's, who's going <laughs> to stop first? <laughs> Wait, who would stop first? <laughs> what are you laughing at? 
I was going to say that and it was makes me want to squash my beef. <laughs> oh, oh. Why didn't you say it? <laughs> why? why what is it that? Like, does that mean you're going to masturbate? Squashing your beef? Yeah. No, I said, uh, who's going to stop first? Jurassic Park or Star Wars? <laughs> But the real question is... is the real question is, yeah, fast. none of them are stopping... Uh, well, Fast and Furious is not stopping before either of them. No. That franchise. Well, it makes sense, you know? The name, the cars, the women. <laughs> <laughs> squash your beef, huh? Well, The Rock and Vin Diesel were squashing their beef together, so that's nice. On Instagram, but you still can't show a nipple, huh? Look at that. <laughs> God. They have a very... Sh- you think there's, like, a nipple guy there that just sits in a dark office? <laughs> Tight. <laughs> Hashtag nipple. It's like Mr. S. There's been a there's been a nipple sighting. It's like Nash would be perfect for that job. <laughs> All you hear be. in the darkness is, oh. <laughs> All right, let's move on here from these disgusting topics. Uh, fan questions, right? Oh, I can start drinking my pre-workout. You can start drinking your pre-workout for yeah. fan questions? So you're all rubbed up. I'm going to the gym after this. Drink it after. What are you, uh, you gotta shake it right into the mic. What are you working out? Shoulders. Is there a question in there? The question was, what are you working out? This question here from Sully, uh, what is Ted working (laughs) out? Just kidding. Uh, this question here from Sully at CellCell5000. Do you think because of all the controversy that happened with Spider-Man, they'll keep this deal going for a while? Well, it's two movies, right? Two movies, yes. So I guess they're gonna have to reevaluate once those movies are up, but... I think Disney's going to watch 75%. <laughs> Disney's going to... There was a rumor that I read that Apple was going to buy Sony and then sell the rights to Spider-Man to Disney. But I that wish they would do that. Yeah, that seems ridiculous. That'd be fantastic. Um, With all the controversy, I mean, this deal is just very fragile. This can break down at any time. We can wake up tomorrow morning and they'll be like, Spider-Man's out. Because it seems like they could just... They're not signing any papers i don't know if they are maybe they are and they've signed the it's in stone that it has to be at least two movies there would be no deal ever to buy spider-man from sony where sony would win ever i mean they could probably get spider-man's worth too much what a couple billion yeah it would definitely be a billion dollar deal i think they were talking about like a four to five billion dollar price tag for selling spider-man straight up that's a lot well i think it's coming years after star wars it's like when the clippers sold for two billion Mm -hmm. clippers weren't a two billion dollar team but once somebody's willing to drop two billion on them they they're two billion dollar team. I mean, you're and forced to sell because your owner's a racist. Right. Well, well, let's see if we can get anything on the Sony, uh, <laughs> the Sony guy. <laughs> but yeah, I mean that's how it goes. So I, this deal could break down after these two movies. They could be like, we're done, and then they're going to come out and do the political answers again. Well, you know, we were very happy to make these movies with Spider Man, but you know, differences, blah blah I hope blah. Not. It just could happen. It out. That's why it's annoying that he's just not owned by Disney. You know, Disney can never catch a break. <laughs> This question or statement here from Tyrannical Lemon at Axie 1110. Bo sounds 6'5. Teddy sounds 6'2. Stop. Aaron sounds 5'8. Nash sounds 5'1. And Marissa sounds 7'4. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'll take the 6'2. Ted, Ted takes that 6'2. I wish I was 6'2. That'd be perfect. I feel like I do sound 6'5. And then people are disappointed when they see me. I'm making the league at 6'2. 6'3. Fuck you. Hey, man, they gave you 5'8. Lowball me. <laughs> what are you? You 5'10? I'm not going over this again. <laughs> Marissa responded to the tweet and was like, Can confirm I'm taller than everyone but Bo. Not me. We're even. We, we, we went back to back, didn't we? You're not even. <laughs> and neither are you. <laughs> I'm taller than Marissa. Marissa's a legit 5'11. I'm 5'11 and three quarters, guy. <laughs> guy. I'm going to need you to see your license. Nash is close to 5'1", though. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's just, accurate. You have to throw Nash under the bus, huh? Not even here to defend himself. Love you, Nash. Uh, this question here from uh, Homero, at Homero underscore. I went, on a, I went on a date last night. What's the proper way to sit with your date? I sat across from her, but the couple in front of us sat together. Across. Do not be same side sitters. That, they're the worst, right? Across, yeah. Well, if it's a square table, you do. You don't it's next to. Next, yeah. Yeah. yeah, you could do that. But I think you could do a cross at a square table as well. Uh, if, the t- if the table's big, yeah. No, if the table's big, then you go side. If yeah. it's small, small enough, t- then you go across. Uh, side is even. That's close. Well, I don't like sitting next to anybody. If, if I see all I do is shit on couples that do uh, that sit same side in booths. And the same side in the booth is really such a social faux pas. <laughs> yeah. I mean, come on. You only do same side when you're with a couple. Yes. Well, this guy, same side in me. I went out to dinner with his girlfriend. (laughs) I went out to dinner with his girlfriend. We get a table, and he tried to sit next to me. (laughs) No, me and his girlfriend both looked at each other. He was probably joking around. No, no, he wanted the no. I was the aisle seat. That's why I was hoping you would take that, and then you would be like, "Oh, and go down the other side." 
<laughs> I was already sitting. <laughs> well, no, you weren't sitting. No, we all went to the table at the same time. I went there. But I didn't know that you went there because then I got to go yeah, back. Yeah, but you got to follow the girlfriend. I was she trying leads to, away. She, no, she was sitting. I was going to get in the corner. I was going to get pushed in the corner. Your pushed girlfriend in the was sitting and you didn't sit next to her? I was going to yes. get pushed in the corner. He did one of those when you come and you finesse the seat. You know, like you take it with two hands and you look around. Like, yeah. is, is this okay? But I was already, I, didn't, I was already trapped, and I got pushed in the corner. Like I knew I would, but it's fine. I pushed in the corner. Yeah, and it, people were behind me. It was an awful seat. Where were you guys? Seat in the fucking house. Don't worry about it. Where were you? Del Fuego. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Don't I worry about sleep. it. This question here from Bram Bugle at Bram Bugle. Don't worry about it. What are you? What are your guys' favorite non-American sports? Um, is soccer considered hockey? non-American. Don't like cricket. <laughs> Hockey's American. Canadian. No, is soccer American. non-American. Yeah, I would say soccer. It's got international origins. Soccer. I, I, you know, sports I'd, outside of America are too confusing for me. Well, I, I, I love I love rugby too. Yo, you watch rugby? I don't know. They what's go going after on. it, dude. Cricket. Uh, oof. What's cricket to me, I mean, just make it simpler. Make it baseball. You know, <laughs> yeah, sure, right, yeah. <laughs> Enough of the bouncing. The fucking. Apparently, cricket games can go on for days. They could just never end. It's unbelievable. It is funny when ESPN releases like their um top 100 most influential athletes, and like six out of the top 20 are cricket players. It, it's funny to think how famous these guys are, are internationally. Oh yeah, and how much money they make. But you know, in Europe, they can probably they're probably being spotted all around. But if they came here, nobody, nobody would know who they were, which is to me kind of fascinating. We have that too with um NFL athletes. They say that they're not recognized as much in in European countries and it's just not that not that popular but then NBA players go to China they're like the Beatles you know? yeah seriously yeah that's what they said <laughs> they get the praised t- more there than here <laughs> yeah Houston Rockets I mean with Yao Ming so it's it's international sports is always inter- interesting to talk about each row of baseball yeah baseball's big in Japan right that's interesting and big in Latin America uh, this question here from Hugaba Snooki the podcast as DCEU characters Cyborg you take it Cyborg yeah. I give you Cyborg I see you laughing. Just the way you gotta like nod it to yourself and look around, like, yeah. Who do you want? That's it. Cyborg. Robin? <laughs> <laughs> You're dead. <laughs> I don't know. I'd take, um, Titans? I'll take J.K. Simmons, Commissioner Gordon. Oh, I feel like I, I have a that. hold on things. What? I, I, I want that. a weird <laughs> pick. <laughs> I well, want you want me to, to give you myself... You can pick anybody and you pick... Well, You're running Gotham, dude. What, what am I going to pick, Batman? I mean, that's the only person I'm going to go with. I'm not going to be that arrogant. Yeah, I'm Batman. <laughs> Take it. <laughs> Aaron's like, yeah, that's right a good now. point. Yeah, I think I'm Batman. <laughs> <laughs> well, now that you mentioned it, I mean... I no, you're like Ezra Miller's Flash if somebody just sucked all the life out of you. <laughs> the fuck's yeah. that supposed to mean? <laughs> you're you're kind of lifeless. <laughs> like a dead fish. What the hell? Yeah, you know, I was just... Go back to that last question. I'm thinking like with Aquaman. The, <laughs> with the international <laughs> oh, sports. Oh, man, yeah. I would I would love to be like a Yao Ming, like where like he has a whole entire country behind him. You know what I mean? What's with you in these like proclamations of like, yeah, I would really like to be Iron Man. Yeah, I would like to really be a, a million dollar athlete who's super famous. It's I'm like, just yeah, saying, no shit. No, I'm just saying, it's got to be great to have that feeling. Like he has a whole country behind him. Ichiro had a whole country behind him. The point about that is a little different. But when you yeah, when you say things like, oh, I want to be Iron Man, it's like, so do I. Okay. What? Yeah, you say. Why can't I say it? Because I don't know. It's like you f- you're the first one to think it, and it bothers me. But <laughs> I'm not al- saying that. <laughs> you know what? It's interesting too with like guys like JJ Barea, where he he goes to Puerto Rico and he's he's like Obama, you know, he's like the uh, Puerto Rican Obama. That's how famous they become in their home countries. Yeah, I'm yeah. the same thing. But but it also it translated to but just you were the, the Puerto Rican Obama. I'm not the Puerto Rican <laughs> Obama. I'm the Puerto Rican Biden. You know. Just happy go lucky. Actually, yeah, that's not looking too good. <laughs> um, like, um, the Houston Rockets are huge in China because Yao Ming played there. So every player who plays for Houston, like they say, James Harden really focuses on marketing in China because he has that advantage really? playing with the Rockets. Tracy McGrady is still really famous over well, they're there. Well, the same the new the Chinese shoe deals is going to be the next big thing because they have a lot of money to offer, so people could be taking wow. off those deals. And Wade was the first the one com- to try and get involved with that. What did Stephon Marbury get? Like, yeah, absurd amount of money. More he's than he s- ever made in the NBA to play there. Yeah, he's huge over Did there. Did Marbury win a, like a chip there? <laughs> he won a couple chips. It's yeah, like the yeah. <laughs> he's, he's still going. MJ. No, I think he's retired now. But no, he's like considered one of the greatest CBA basketball players of all time. Isn't there a big player there right now who just signed there like last year or two years ago? I think Jimmy Fredette there? plays there. I think Jimmy Fredette plays in the Chinese league. There's a lot of NBA guys over there. It, there's money in it now. Yeah, I remember. Um, there was um rumors about. I forget what European team it was. I think it was Real Madrid or Barcelona offering Kobe Bryant fifty million dollars to play for one year. That's it. That's what I would, if I was like LeBron, I would retire from the NBA, take one of these massive paychecks, and just play for a hundred million dollars a year in China. Someone will offer him that. Wait, did you just say Real Madrid offered Kobe? It basketball, was one of those European team. teams. I don't know if it was Real Madrid. Oh, basketball. Basketball. No, oh, no, not basketball. soccer. No, no, for basketball. Yeah. 
Wait, Kobe, <laughs> he played soccer too? Well, I think LeBron would be smart. He probably did play soccer. LeBron probably needs one. He he needs to get at least one more ring, and I hope he does. But if he doesn't, if he retired at like 39, he's still going to be good enough to play in the CBA. Hell yeah. Go play there for five years. That's just going to be good for the brand. I saw a report that Kobe learned French just to talk trash. or He learned he learned, he learned some language just to talk trash to someone on the court. Well, I know he knows Spanish and Italian. I think it was French to talk. He, yeah, he learned French to talk shit to Tony Parker. That's funny. Just learning uh, things to say. And yeah. That's such a Kobe story. Just staying all night listening to his Rosetta Stone while watching <laughs> game film. <laughs> uh, this question here from Mag at Revis24 for life. Hmm. Top three QBs of all time. A lot of sports questions here. I like it. Uh, I'm going Brady, Montana, Peyton Manning. Brady, Marino, and Peyton. I don't know. Uh, Sanchez, Donald, <laughs> Chad Pennington. Well, I'm going to spitball here. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> off the top of the head, I guess. Joe Namath. Uh, now, Brady, probably. Peyton, I don't know. That's tough. I, I don't know because I don't ever watch Joe Montana. Here he was really good. He had the, the, the pass. You ever watch George Washington? No. All right, yeah, we founded the country. There you go. <laughs> Montana's got four rings. I know, I know. It's tough. I only, I can only go off of what I saw, but yeah, probably. Oh, all of a sudden you, you're an only, <laughs> only go off. <laughs> this is why you're the Flash when somebody sucked the life out of you. Yeah, make just it go fun. with the question. Yeah, yeah, just throw in a Warren Moon. Oh, so what was fun like, about your guys' answers? Uh, Brady, Montana, uh, Manny. That was, that was real fun. I had such a good time listening to that, Ted. Okay. I was on my. That wasn't my five. I was on the edge of my my five. Edge of my seat. That wasn't my my three. We were very diplomatic with our answers, but then you know, if you would have given an exciting answer, like, "Oh, that's cool," you know, Brady, Rogers, Payton, it's like, "Oh, great," and then we move on to the next. But you had to find fucking three loopholes within the question. "Eh, I don't don't watch. Never really sure. Fuck it, Brady's a system quarterback. (laughs) (laughs) I thought you were going to say "fuck it," Namath, (laughs) Pennington. Every time I talk, you, there's rumors that the Jets Colts Super Bowl was fixed in favor of the Jets. That's ridiculous. You're pointing me out there. <laughs> I thought you were gonna give me a rumor. This is a rumor about me. No. <laughs> there's a rumor about. And every time I bring that up to Aaron, he's like, "No, Joe Namath was the truth." <laughs> like you stayed up all night watching all those Joe Namath tapes. <laughs> uh, this question here from Zachary Zalazo. Oh my God, he's got the fucking ruler like a nun. Favorite season and favorite seasonal drink. Favorite Ooh. season is fall. Oh, it's fall, man. Sp- yeah. So good. And seasonal drink. Well, we don't have fucking fall Oktoberfest. Anymore. What's that? Yeah, Sam drink. Adams. Yeah, it is, right? Yeah. I That's, love Sam Adams. Sure. I don't know. Seasonal drink. That's the one beer I can really drink without like making a face. <laughs> you, you are bad with alcohol. I am. We went to Doa Fuego and we got those those fruity rum things, whatever. The way Ted was trying to sip it, <laughs> he's like Squidward trying to eat the Krabby Patty. <laughs> Like sticking his tongue in, like, eh, eh. If we had fall, it would be perfect, but this is pretty much winter, and yesterday was summer. <laughs> what the fuck is going on? We haven't had a transition in, in like three years. It felt like we had a good, uh, we had a good spring. Yeah, spring's yeah, nice. Was, I like that spring. was a long spring. The spring brings you to summer, which is nice. Fall brings you to winter. It does, which yeah. Sucks. Spring usually brings you to summer. <laughs> I hate summer. I love summer. I love all the. That's seasons. the worst winter. Uh, winter. That's the worst season. Summer. I like adapting to all the seasons. Hot know? chocolate's a good season. Hot, yeah, yeah. That might you be want Does that count? Does you that want count as a drink, though? You never yeah. said an alcoholic. Al- no, yeah. you never said alcoholic. Or good like October. I do like winter. Lager or like Oktoberfest, pumpkin spice latte. That's always a classic. Basic. Do you like the pump? Do you like like the pumpkin theme? Basic like is pumpkin good. Pumpkin spice and everything. Yeah. Pumpkin's good. Into that. Pumpkin's really good. Like a nice pumpkin pie. I tried yeah, that. You I guys like have it. had this debate yeah. on the channel. We did. Yeah, pumpkins apple versus pie. apples. Yeah. Apple pie won. Yeah. <laughs> I don't, no, you <laughs> you conceded <laughs> that you don't even like apple pie. No, he no, took no, pumpkin. I, I don't like pumpkin. I took an apple is better, but I do like pumpkin. And Teddy's like, oh Ted, no, you took apple. Teddy took pumpkin. Yeah, yeah. I didn't take pumpkin. I don't like pumpkin. Yeah, but that's the thing. You took pumpkin, but then halfway <laughs> through the argument, you're like, yeah, I don't even like pumpkin. <laughs> I think you just defended pumpkin to the death. Oh, uh, <laughs> is there a tape on that fight? Yeah, yeah, yeah it's called the uh, Halloween, Halloween review. review. It was on Halloween? That's almost a year from fucking... We're almost a year away from that. Remember how bad that movie was, but people liked it? Yeah, I do remember that. Does I that feel it. like a year oh, ago? Yeah. Holy it shit. was a year ago. Yeah, it was. Wait, what'd, what'd you say? What? The- <laughs> What, what did you just ask? <laughs> I didn't ask anything. I asked. I thought you said. That, I thought you said it feels like it was a year ago. It does. I was like, yeah, it was a year. ago. No, I said it doesn't feel like it was oh. a year ago. This question here from Cave at Azor, Ohio. Love that name. You can only watch one of the following movies. Which one are you choosing? One, The Irishman. Two, The Lighthouse. Three, Dune. Four, Tenet. Dune. Dune. But I want to see Irishman you too. You guys said that too quickly. You didn't marinate. No, the Irishman was... coming out a hundred percent. That might be the best bet, right? 
It's between no. the Irishman and the Lighthouse. Dune could come out. It could be terrible. Tenet might be bad. But Irish, be no is, Dune, Irishman, is Dune going to be bad, though? <laughs> the thing about Probably the Irishman not. is, like, I You've think I know. You've almost seen it before. I know it's yeah. going to happen. With Dune. Dune is just... Uh, poss- but then there's a book, too, so I can have that option. Tenet, Nolan movie. That's... Tenet looks good, man. Yeah. That budget, really didn't get much, but it's yeah. When he's just looking at those gunshots, I'm like, oh, what, a tough what's, question. what's going on here? Yeah, it's a tough question. I'd say Dune. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> that pre workout's kicking in, huh? Yeah, it is. Uh, this question here from Thomas at King of Boltonia. How many geese could y'all take in a fight? Not a lot. Don't, geese get pretty rowdy. Geese. Geese are always grilling me when I'm walking around the lake. Yeah, so you see that video of the, the two, I guess, geeselings? I don't know. <laughs> what's, a, what's like a baby geese or goose? Geis. Baby goose? Geese, yeah, geese. <laughs> well, anyway, there's two babies walking up to his like leg, and he's like, I got food for you. And then like eight or nine geese come out of nowhere and start pressing him. The geese that, could fuck you up. If they, 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 they could, swarm, yeah. They come all at you, pecking at you. They, they're big, too. I don't fuck with birds, man. <laughs> <laughs> birds are uh, Birds get reckless, man. Look at the dinosaurs, you know? Look at their fucking ancestors. Wow. They were running around, causing a ruckus. Eating children, destroying theme parks. Yeah, the birds, they're up to something. <laughs> if somebody should make a movie about this, call it The Birds. And the bees. Make it like, oh, boy. <laughs> you and the squash and beefs today, huh? It's out of control. This question here from Movie Nerd at It's Jose QT2. When are you guys doing a meet and greet in L.A., smiley face? Buy my ticket. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'd call. Yeah. Just do a Put meet me up great, in a five-star uh, hotel and buy my ticket. I'll actually, I, I wouldn't. I'm not putting that out there. Because someone would buy a ticket. No, we'll go to L.A. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> I can't take off. <laughs> <laughs> I got this thing in December. <laughs> uh, I got this, uh, yeah, I got this. I'm booked. No, it's for next week. I'm booked all winter. This question here from Terry underscore Mayfield is cereal soup. Why or why not? Yes. I hate that question. No, I'm going to I'm gonna get, yeah, I'm going to give cereal soup. No, soup has to be. It's a soup, liquidy substance hot. in a no, bowl. No, it doesn't hot. have to be hot. Soup's soup's doesn't hot. Have to doesn't be hot. have to be hot. Yes, it does. They ha- they are called soups. Then it's not a soup. Well, your criteria and for soup. Clam shatter is milk based, so you can't do that argument. Cream based. N- no, it's, it's still it's, hot though. There are cold soups. I forget what it's called. It's an Italian soup. It's like a tomato based soup. When you find out the name, then we'll have this argument. <laughs> but as for right now, I'm not budging. Damn. No, it's not. Cause soup has to have like. It's about the feel. You know, you, yeah. you, when you're eating cereal, you're not eating soup. You chew. You chew and you're crunching. You don't crunch soup. I'd say cereal is in the soup family, but it's like a sub-soup. What are soups in a cereal family? No, no. It's not. That's the thing. Now, let's talk soups. Chicken noodle soup is... (laughs) Where are we on this? It's not in the cereal family. You know, it's like Christianity. You know, that's the big umbrella. And then under the, you know, your Protestant, Lutheran, Catholic. Yes. So you think soup. No, no, no. The umbrella... Yeah, yeah. Soup is the umbrella. Cereal falls under that. It's a form of soup, but... I'm not buying you it. You guys are just very rigid with this. Like the hot dog sandwich debate? Yeah, of course it's a fucking sandwich. Well, if you fold it's a pe- hot dog. If you fold a piece of pizza, does that become a sandwich? No. What's because if you fold... No, because no, a pizza is a pizza. But now you, you fold just altering it, now it's a sandwich. You're just altering it. It's still a pizza. You make it sandwich-like to make yeah. it easier to consume, but it's not a sandwich. No, you take what I'm thinking. <laughs> <laughs> and you verbalize yeah. it. <laughs> no, because you fold a pizza in Texas, they might shoot you. What? What? When my cousins from Texas came to New York and saw me fold a pizza, it was like I spit on the Holy Bible. They were like, whoa, what are you doing? <laughs> they don't have claim over pizza. No, but they- Who do they, they think they are? New, no, but they New don't, Yorkers can do whatever they want to pizza. Yeah. No, no, thing. but I'm I saying they, they don't know about the technique because now they use it. That's if the they thing. Wanna, they, ad, they have adopted the folding technique. Don't judge me about pizza from Texas. If you want to judge me about my bull riding and cattle wrangling skills, then yeah, go for it. You yeah. have precedent. My not time. Right, you, guys not pizza. Being, you guys are being such arrogant New Yorkers. I'm just saying they were a, a bit thrown back. They were startled by the folding technique. If I got pressed you for folding made, my You pizza, made it sound like I'd they were contentious back. over this. No, they were just surprised. Oh, well, you oh, say surprised. Way, yeah. You made it sound you like... Said it was, you, you said, said, they said like they'll shoot you. Yeah. Yeah, I did kind of. I, I did water it down. <laughs> no, but they were very... They weren't aggressive, but they were shocked. It's okay, like, that's you know, different, then. You know, like, when somebody... You think somebody breaks into your house, but it's really just someone you know. You're like, whoa, you try to shoot them. You guys don't do that? <laughs> whoa, I thought you were a burglar. <laughs> whoa, Meg, you startled me. You have a gun? <laughs> it's a <little> bat. <laughs> that's a great episode. Ah, oh, Meg, the must. What, what, what was that? He wants the mustard on his sandwich when he's on the uh, intercom. That is sorry. I was reading the fan question. Oh, you're a dick, dude. <laughs> I was reading a fan question. 
<laughs> no, what, what, you tell Meg to make the sandwich. Yeah, yeah. when yeah. the comes. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's like Meg scrape yeah. off that mustard. Use the other yeah. mustard. <laughs> yeah. It's one of my favorite jokes of all time. Oh, this question here from Kevin W. Oh, he's got a long question here, but I'm not going to read all of it. Wow, he worked, That's a question. he worked really hard on that question. But he's got one question inside the bigger question. He says, "Is there one particular joke that you guys have made that's your favorite ever?" Um, he's like, not necessarily talking about a one-liner, but what is the best joke you've ever heard that we've made? Yeah, I think so. Uh, I don't know. I have so many; it's just hard to remember all of them. You have a lot of jokes. The favorite joke that's ever been made on the channel will forever be Stu saying that when we were reviewing Silence, he fell asleep during the movie. <laughs> so when it was his time to talk, he goes, "Yeah, you know, um, I kind of slept on this movie, literally." <laughs> <laughs> to me, every time I watch that, or when I don't know why he's not on every video, but <laughs> yeah, for real. When we got him on the Blair Witch review, and he was like, "Does this have something to do with uh, the the Blair Witch trials?" <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, "No, Stu, that's not the <laughs> that's not the same thing." Or when no, another great Stu joke is when he asked me if he ever saw the Blair Witch when we were reviewing Ouija, and I was like, "Yeah, Stu, you reviewed it with me." He's <laughs> like, "Did I see that one?" <laughs> No, that when Stu asked about the switch, you told him about yeah, it. Yeah, that joke I can't. Well, that's not on 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 the, on channel. the channel, but <laughs> that is an all time Stu joke. He's a funny kid. There's a joke I made about. I think we were talking about um, how how uh, the Rock and Vin Diesel squashed your beef, and I said, "Do <laughs> 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 you want to squash my beef?" That's probably the, that's probably a good one. You've got some classic ones. I'm trying to. I remember. can never remember any of my stuff. Yeah, I probably made a joke, but I don't remember anything. Well, yours well, you is the chief that, one, but. That wasn't a joke as more I as... I didn't make that joke up, though. I know. It wasn't, it wasn't even a joke. Jokes. You just say things. Like when you said 11 could take out the U.S. military. Or that 11 shouldn't be coddled. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Or the, No, no, no. The, the premise was that Hopper kidnapped 11. That's what you were trying to say. That, to and me, he was trying to coddle her. <laughs> that, that is the funniest moment I think you've ever had on the channel. Because when I was like, who are you taking, 11 or the U.S. military? You're like, eh, we'll, we'll figure it out. <laughs> I'm trying to think, like, what's my favorite all-time joke in a comedy? I do love in Blazing Saddles when they're forming the militia to go after the sheriff. <clears throat> and there's a soldier online and he's chewing gum. And the guy behind the desk goes, are you chewing gum? He's like, yeah. He's like, did you bring enough for, a, for everybody? Like, no. And he just shoots him. <laughs> 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 to me, that's just perfect humor. This question here from Justin Lin for a long time. I've been listening to you guys. Thanks, Justin. From L.A. He might be uh, present at the meet and greet. Okay. I would love to hear your guys' thoughts on HBO Succession. Chip, I was wondering if you guys would consider doing a weekly podcast reviewing the show. Well, little probably too little too late for that, but you guys haven't seen Succession, right? No. I scrolled no, past I it yesterday. <laughs> on HBO? Yeah. Like, Wait, should I start to linger? Did you linger on it? I, I, yeah, I sat on it for a second, watched the preview, and then went to the next one. What did you end up choosing? What did I choose? I chose uh, Woman Killers hmm. on, uh, what it? on Netflix. Oh, so you switched... Streaming services yeah. entirely. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, here's Succession's great. I'll have to watch it sometime. You need your show anyway, so that could be next. Oh, you know what we didn't talk about? BoJack Horseman coming to an end, season six. Oh, wow. We got a question here from Otoro. Would you ever review BoJack Horseman? It's lit. It's one of the best shows on TV and uh, kind of a show that's gone under the radar. And I'm actually, I'm actually, you know, it's bittersweet that it's ending, but it feels like a sitcom rather than uh, an animated comedy where it's not a floating timeline where the characters progress and things change. So it coming to an end, going out on top, because season five was fantastic. And these first five seasons of the show have been near flawless. So going out on top, maybe, maybe we'll review the final season. It's split up into two parts, I think, November and January. No, it's a really good show. I enjoy it. I'll have to rewatch it sometime, but it's always weird when a show is like at its prime and they just, well, I hear Netflix is, they canceled them? Didn't Aaron Paul say that? Yeah. No, yeah. Apparently uh, Netflix didn't want to bring them back. That's odd. They give money to fucking everybody. <laughs> well, Maybe. there was a report, too, that the writers wanted to be paid the same as Big Mouth, because I guess Big Mouth is puts out the bigger numbers, which is also a good show. Uh, that show freaks me out. Well, if Netflix would show their fucking, like, their ratings, the shows, yeah. maybe we could help. I'm sure maybe someone else can pick them up. I'm glad that it is ending, though. I mean, I don't know what they had in mind, but BoJack's not getting any younger, you know? He looks old when you compare him to season one. Isn't it animated? This question here from Doug Gibson. I just watched Avengers Civil War again the other day, and I forgot how epic that fight between Cap, Bucky, and Iron Man was. My question is, who do you guys think wins that fight straight up with no outside interference? I'm going with Iron Man. It's one between of, Bucky and Iron Man. It's between not Bucky. Uh, Cap, Cap and, Iron and Iron Man. Straight up. Yeah. Cap needed Bucky to get the upper hand. I mean, Iron Man is no fucking Iron Man. What do you mean? Good point. 
<laughs> <laughs> trying to get where Teddy was going. Where are you going? Nah, he said upper hand. No, straight. <laughs> Bucky. <laughs> Bucky has one hand. Them well, straight up, Ca- Iron Man kills Captain America. If they're fighting to the death, and yeah, they nerf and they buff characters all the time within the MCU, which is kind of annoying because in the Civil War comic, when they fight the first time, Iron Man beats the piss out of Captain America. He doesn't even get a shot in on him because they're just not the same strength level, you know? And then Vision does something to Iron Man's suit where he depowers it, and then Cap starts beating the crap out of him. And I thought they were going to go that route. Wearing that Iron Man suit that he had on in Civil War, there's no way either of them should be able to touch him. Well, I don't know because, like, he does... Captain America does attack his weaknesses because... It is a suit. It's not like him, you know. Where if you fuck up some of the like some of the parts of the suit, you, know, you get an advantage. I feel like one punch full strength to the chest would kill Captain America well, from he took Iron Man. Thanos from the head. I know that. Yeah, the way that they well, people say that he was holding the. No, he did get punched in the head in Infinity War, right? Yeah, his face should have exploded. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and Iron Man did. He took a moon. Yeah, Iron Man, and then <laughs> and then a couple movies later, he's going one on one with Thanos. He's actually putting hits on him. He's pushing him back. Nobody else could really do that. I kind of like how they kind of make the characters even. It's like anyone could fight anybody. That makes it like I feel like DC. The characters are so overpowered. You're like, how can Batman even help? Well, they adjust to that for helping. Yeah, yeah. I guess so. But Batman clearly had to depower Superman to even stand toe to toe with it's that. like Hawkeye even, then, even yeah but some the, caps the same thing Iron Man though yeah. <sighs> not really yeah when he when he fucks up his his things oh his, his targeting <laughs> yeah it's like Jeff Bridges <laughs> in the first Iron Man you knocked out my targeting sequence <laughs> just punch him <laughs> <laughs> just Can't walk see. up to him and <laughs> squish him <laughs> he's just hanging there yeah <laughs> I'll All take right. Iron Man yeah yeah Iron Man I'll take a Thor over both Thor is the man dude I love Thor <laughs> are you gonna like whip us that scene that ruler was that scene the first Avengers when uh I, I, I guess it is it's when when they first meet Iron Man and uh, Cap and they fight in the woods? Yes, yeah, it's a great scene. Yeah, then Thor comes out of nowhere and babies and uh, both. Yeah, we've seen the movie. No, Cap comes up? in. And, yeah, all right, let's go. Oh uh, no, it, it's Thor. Thor and Cap are fighting. No, Thor. No, and Thor Iron and Iron Man are fighting. It's Thor and, and Hulk comes in the yeah. hangar. All right, everybody, thanks for <laughs> listening to another episode of the Nerd Two Podcast. I am Bo Oliver for Aaron, the Nerd Two Monkey, and Teddy. We are signing off, getting ready for New York Comic Con. So if you guys are there, look for the Nerd Two T-shirts. Put that in the beginning. Yeah, probably should have. We did say that already. Yeah, we did. We didn't, we didn't really talk about it, though. Yeah, yeah well, well, we were doing the cold opening. We had a whole well. opening about it. Well, you came in at, like, the last minute. I didn't know you guys were starting. You're always lounging. On, well, we're, like, right up on the mics, <laughs> talking, <laughs> bantering, and you're, like, kicked back, like, you got his feet up. Oh, we're recording? Well, we sit here for, like, five, ten minutes before you even hit record, so I don't know when you hit the button. All right, yeah, Spotify, right. SoundCloud, iTunes, prank, <laughs> taking a line from Teddy. <laughs> Oh, it's it's a big word I say. Yeah, that is. I your, say prick a lot. That's your catchphrase. Hey guys, thank you for watching this video, and of course we would like to thank our Patreon supporters. Without you guys, Nerd Soup wouldn't be Nerd Soup. Seriously, your support is what keeps the fridge full, so thank you once again for your support. If you are interested in supporting Nerd Soup through Patreon, visit our page and check out the different rewards we offer to our fans. If not, then no problem. We appreciate anyone who takes time from their day to watch our videos. So thank you to each and every one of you out there watching, and remember to like and share this video. And hit the subscribe button if you want to see more videos like it. Or don't. 